from McDonough Arena on the campus of Georgetown University in our nation's capital. This is Big East Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network as the 12th ranked DePaul Blue Demons get set to take on the Georgetown Hoya. Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore on hand courtside here inside McDonough Arena. Monica, a fun game on tap. DePaul already has one hand on the Big East regular season title. They're going for the outright title tonight against the upset-minded Hoyas. Well, and of course, another thing they're looking for is to clinch that number one seed in the Big East tournament because they want to three-peat the big thing on their list of goals this year. But let's take a look at the Big East standings coming in to tonight. You see there, DePaul one win away from winning the Big East regular season title outright. Of course, they could also win with a Marquette loss tonight as well. At the bottom, Georgetown 2-12 and in conference play, trying to fend off the Xavier Musketeers. And they're thinking about seeding in the conference tournament as well, and so looking to get a few more wins before they close out the season. Let's take a look at our players to watch tonight in Washington, D.C. For DePaul, Shante Stonewall, the senior, leads a star-studded Blue Demon squad. She has already been on the Big East honor roll seven times this year, and what makes her so dangerous, she can shoot from all over the floor, the three-point shot, the mid-range, and, of course, posting up as well. For the Hoyas, it's Anita Caleb of four blocks in her last game against the Villanova Wildcats. They're hoping she has a big game tonight for Georgetown. Last time these two teams played, she had 10 points and seven rebounds. Georgetown needs that type of production out of Caleb and not just on the defensive end. Should be a fun matchup tonight in our nation's capital. It's the Blue Demons and the Hoyas coming up next. Back here inside McDonough Arena, take a look at the starting lineups. First for the DePaul Blue Demons, Monica, a really strong five. Obviously, we talked about Shante Stonewall, but Kelly Campbell, the senior from Wall, New Jersey, can do it all for the Blue Demons. She absolutely can. She's so good at distributing the ball, rebounding, everything you need, all the little things she does. Lexi Held, a sharpshooter as well, number 10, the sophomore for DePaul as well. Take a look at the Georgetown starting lineup. Couple of young up-and-comers, but Taylor Barnes, the grad transfer from Memphis, is the player that really makes them go offensively. She certainly is, but she's also at the top of every scouting report, so every team focuses on her. Take a look at Georgetown getting ready over there. There's Doug Bruno, the head coach of the DePaul Blue Demons in his 34th season, was nominated for the Naismith National Coach of the Year this week, and he's looking to add another Big East regular season title to his illustrious resume. Absolutely, and he'll be the first to tell you he thinks that should be the National Coaching Staff of the Year because he credits his players and his assistant coaches with being nominated for that award. Getting ready to tip it up. Stonewall wins the tip for DePaul, and the Blue Demons control in their dark blues. Georgetown in their home grays, and the Blue Demons are going from left to right. Kelly Campbell, the senior, holding it at the top of the key. DePaul Strong drive game. inside, just off the rim, fight for the rebound. Campbell comes up with its second chance opportunity. Morris to Church, in and out on a three. Hoyas have the rebound. And Georgetown lucky on that possession because what Georgetown can't do is give DePaul second chance opportunities. DePaul missed two shots on that possession, but Georgetown has to rebound better on the defensive end. There's the Georgetown coach, James Howard, his third season in charge. 40 wins overall, and he told us before the game the first five minutes of this game, Monica, crucial the Hoyas want to pull off an upset today. Well, he knows his team has not been getting off to quick starts. And tonight against DePaul, they can't afford to let DePaul put a lot of points on the scoreboard with Georgetown having a cold shooting night. So they have to get things going offensively early. It was Osaki Eresi long on the jumper. And the Blue Demons control. Here's Held. Crossover dribble inside to Stonewall. Was able to corral it. Morris thought about it. Cross court pass. Lexi Held is a sharp shooter. Too strong on that one. And the weak side rebound by Kaleva. And Georgetown has to be careful with the basketball. The turnovers can really hurt the Hoyas. Case in point right there. 
But the shot is long that time from Sonia Morris. And again, the Hoyas grab the rebound. Kalova has been a factor so far on the defensive glass. She needs to keep doing that tonight. Hoyas coming off a 48 to 40 loss to the Villanova Wildcats their last time out. Coach Howard seemed pretty satisfied with parts of that performance, but again, it was mostly on the defensive end. Well, that's exactly right. Georgetown did a nice job keeping Villanova from scoring a lot of points, but they had trouble finding their own shots. Barnes short on that one as we take a look at the keys for DePaul. Fast pace in the three-point shooting important, but also the assist. That's what DePaul ball is all about. Absolutely. Quick ball movement, getting everyone involved, stretching out the defense. That is what DePaul does so well. Off the backboard and then short off the iron on a three-point try on the far corner by Taylor Barnes. Here come the Blue Demons. Up and under layup, no good. Fight for the rebound. And, and Campbell, Campbell restarts it. Again, she has been really good on the offensive glass. Wide open layup missed by Stonewall. We finally get our first points. Deja Church on the second chance try. As we take a look at the Hoya keys to the game, second chance points, extremely important, Monica, but we already mentioned it, protecting the basketball might be at the top of the list. Absolutely, you can't have a lot of turnovers against DePaul, and as we talked about, you have to rebound very well. You can't give them a lot of chances. Kalova up and under on a nice feed inside by Kovacikova, and it's a 2-2 game early. And I like the fact that Kovacikova is looking to get Kalova involved very early on to get her a little confidence. That's what she struggled with this year is her confidence on the offensive end, so maybe that quick bucket will get her going. And Held drives inside right from the Big East logo, knocks down the jumper. And despite a slow start, the Blue Demons do have a two-point lead, 6.40 to go in the opening quarter, and a turnover. That pressure, that's another thing DePaul's known for is the full court pressure, but you have to convert on those layups. And Morris misses a wide open try. Couple of wide open misses for the Blue Demons early on. Couple of warning signs for the Hoyas. Nice look inside again though to Kalova. I really like that they're trying to get her involved early. Held ripped it away from her. It'll stay with Georgetown. Kalova has the size advantage on everybody on the court for both teams. Let's look at this here. Great bounce pass. I really like what Georgetown's doing because as you said, they recognize that they have a mismatch there. If they can get her good high percentage shots on the inside, she is gonna be very effective for the Hoyas. Barnes will inbound. Brianna Jones, Louisville grad transfer from North Babylon, New York. Wasagi Eresi, a little wild on that shot. And Deja Church comes out with it for DePaul. Up ahead. Nice pass inside, Stonewall blocked from behind, and the Hoyas come out with it. And Osagi Oresi really can provide those momentum plays. I think she felt a little bad about that shot on the other end of the floor. She looked to make it up on the defensive end, and that was a huge play by the senior. She was a walk-on on this basketball team. She has been huge. Drive inside, Osagi Oresi thought she was found, and the three-point jump shot is good by Taylor Barnes, and the Hoyas are out in front. That's a big bucket by Taylor Barnes. They need more of that from her. The answer from Kelly Campbell stepped into the three, 7-5 to Paul. I think the thing that's so special about Kelly Campbell's game is she's not one of these players that feels like she needs to score 20 points every night. She's a player that feels like she needs to do what her team needs every night. If that's scoring, she can do it. If it's dishing the assists, she can do it. She facilitates. She is truly the all-around player. This was from earlier, the great block from behind. Stonewall had a wide open look and the rejection by Osagi Eresi out of nowhere. Look at that great off ball movement. That was Bakeljo just checked into the game for her first minutes, but the Hoyas stopped them in their tracks. Jones a pull up, it's short, and Bakeljo has the rebound for the Blue Demons. And Georgetown not getting a lot of second chance opportunities on their offensive end. They really have to watch their shot selection. Campbell, great extra pass to Pakelja, no good. Fight for the rebound, and the Hoyas have it. Well, that rebounding has been crucial, but the pressure ramps up. Hoyas weren't patient, it leads to a Morris jumper. It's pure. And this is the problem when you play DePaul. This full court pressure is really difficult to get around, and Georgetown has not done a great job protecting the basketball against this press. This time they're able to break through it. Barnes on the crossover, takes it herself to the basket, too strong. Morris has the rebound. The other thing, of course, that that pressure does is it speeds up the tempo of the game. 
DePaul running through the DePaul rather running through the Georgetown defense so far. Kelly Campbell and Dee Bakelja out and running. Early four-point lead for the Blue Demons in our nation's capital on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we got to be all in, all in, all right? We got to make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's bring it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. Early four-point lead for DePaul. Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore here in our nation's capital as the Blue Demons talk things over. We take a look at the series history between these two programs. And, well, it's pretty slanted towards the Blue Demons. Last win for Georgetown in the rivalry came back in 2017-2018. But the Hoyas at home been a while 2009 2010 the last time they were able to pull off an upset against Doug Bruno's Blue Demons well and one thing that James Howard told us before this game I mean the thing that is getting his players really excited this is the number 12 ranked team in the country they would love to pull off that upset here at home and of course break this streak of losing to the Blue Demons here in McDonough we talked to him yesterday and mentioned, you know, is there a little extra added motivation trying to stop DePaul from getting the outright title and like you mentioned he mentioned the the opposite, which was basically, yeah, we want to win, but we want to say that we beat the top 12 team in the country and put that on our resume more than, you know, forget about our record, forget about all that stuff. We want that on our resume and forget about what DePaul's playing for. We have to focus on what we're playing for. Well, that's exactly right. And I think that gives his team a lot of locker room motivation. And that was just unlucky right there as Brianna Jones lost her footing. Yeah, out of the timeout, it was Church who got the bucket and the pressure from DePaul continues to ramp up. Jones gets it across the timeline. Six point lead with four minutes to play in the first quarter for DePaul. But Georgetown has done a much better job on the past two trips down the floor handling that pressure. But Georgetown can't afford to let that pressure speed up their offense. They want to run the shot clock down. They want long possessions in this game because they don't want to give DePaul so many possessions. And it looks like a double dribble was called as the DePaul Blue Demons initially Forced a turnover, but the Hoyas get a break and they regain possession after Kova Jakova drove into traffic. And again, we've talked about it protecting the basketball. Georgetown has to value their opportunities. Right into Jones, top of the key, guarded by Church. Cassandra Gordon, her first action of the game. And yeah, that's going to be a blocking foul against Deja Church. Sandra Gordon's a player that James Howard has talked a lot about lately. She's that spark off the bench that they're looking for. He really thinks that she can be that explosive player for the Hoyas. She's just another player they're looking to get that confidence and that rhythm in the game. Sophomore from Santa Barbara, California. It was one of the first players Coach Howard talked about when he mentioned players that are coming along really nicely this season for the Hoyas. That one from Kovacikova is off to the right. Stonewall up ahead, picked off by Kovacikova with great hustle. Back up ahead, and it's controlled by Taylor Barnes. She was so smart, careful not to travel with the basketball. Had her head up the whole time, looking for a teammate. She is a very savvy basketball player. Gordon to Jones, that's a three, and it's good. 
Brianna Jones knocks it down, and the Hoyas are back within three. And this is a great sign for Georgetown that both Taylor Barnes and Brianna Jones have knocked down three-pointers in this first quarter. Held on the dry pump fake into Dahlman her first minutes. Up strong, and Kaleva with a great defensive stand there for the Hoyas. That's exactly right. That play was disrupted by Kaleva. She is so important defensively for the Hoyas. Kaleva, though, misses on the baseline jumper. Here's Campbell. Kiara Dahlman inside. Stonewall gets great position. Yes, and a foul. And she'll go to the line for a chance at a three-point play. She is such an impressive player because we've talked about it. Her range is everywhere. She's got great post moves. She can withstand the contact, knock down the jumper, head to the free throw line. She can knock down the three. She can hit the mid-range shot. She can facilitate for her teammates. She really is one of those players you can count on for whatever you need. Missed the free throw, but it's rebounded by Campbell. Out for a three by Dolman, and she knocks it down. And that's a huge bonus for DePaul. Not exactly what they're counting on her for in this contest, but that was a big bucket for Dahlman. Pressure ran back up, a dangerous pass by Barnes. I love Boys, how they'll get it across. Campbell is on that press. Kalova is fading away a little bit. It was off the back of the iron. And it was too strong. She needs a little softer touch on those jumpers. Held in transition, has the shooting touch. And DePaul is running on all cylinders right now. A 19-8 lead after Lexi Held stepped in to a three-point jump shot. When we were a little surprised by some of those shots they missed early on, seemed like it took them just a little while to warm up, but now they are knocking down these three-pointers. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. In fact, they are second in the country in three-pointers, and you can see why. Lexi Held shooting just under 36% from three this season, and that pressure that DePaul seems to be using throughout the entire first quarter seems to be taking a little bit of its toll, and the pace is getting closer to what the Blue Demons are hoping for. Well, you wonder why nine times this year they've scored over 90 points. It's because of all the possessions they get, and that pressure is a big reason why. It seemed like that bucket by Stonewall really got DePaul back into their offensive crew, and you could see when she got the foul call and made the bucket, that felt like a big basket. She's one of the leaders on this team. It's Stonewall and it's Campbell. They are so big, not just for what they do on the floor, but the leadership and what they inspire among their teammates. Coach Howard told us first five minutes were important. Last two minutes of this first quarter seem vital right now with DePaul in control, at least for the moment. You see these double teams coming so quick on the pressure. Once again, Georgetown doing a nice job taking care of the basketball, not turning it over. Kalova. Out to Jones, dribbling inside, foul against, I believe it's Kelly Campbell, and it is. I like how aggressive Brianna Jones was on that position, just putting the ball on the floor, driving, drawing the contact. She needs to do more of that. Now Tatiana Thompson in the contest for Georgetown. She's another player that can provide that spark off the bench, and she can be a mismatch problem for a lot of teams. Kaleva with a screen for Kovacikova. Brianna Jones fires a three and hits. That's a big shot. Jones has knocked down two triples for Georgetown, and it's back to single digits. And again, that's huge for the Hoyas. She was very quiet against Villanova on Sunday. In fact, Sean, you and I were talking about it before the game. James Howard had her and Taylor Barnes sitting on the bench for the fourth quarter. But today, Brianna Jones really is getting into her offense early. Almost forced a turnover, but the shooters roll in the corner for Kelly Campbell. I really like how Kelly Campbell's asserting herself early on. She knew her team was missing some early shots, and she has really stepped in for the Blue Demons. Barnes as the Hoyas break the pressure. Too strong on the layup. And a foul against Kovacikova on Kelly Campbell who pulled down the rebound. Deja Church will come back in for DePaul. And Tiana Jones will check in for the Hoyas, her first action. 56 seconds left in the first. They can knock down shots from the outside for the Hoyas.
Stovall who also just checked in over to Lexi Held. Stonewall, left elbow fader, no good. And the rebound by Tiana Jones. Kalova was right in her face. She's doing a nice job trying to contain Stonewall. It is easier said than done as we talked about because she is so active all over the floor. About a second, seven second difference between the shot clock and the game clock at the end of the first quarter. Eight to shoot for the Hoyas. Kovacikova's floater off the glass, no good. 10 seconds for DePaul. Held has it with five. Held for three. Too strong. Kalova has the rebound, and that will end the first quarter here in Washington, D.C. That is another huge defensive rebound for Anita Kalova. Well, the Blue Demons are forcing the pressure, they're forcing their pace, and they lead by 11 at the end of the first quarter on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. Join the conversation with hashtag Big East WBB. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. Second quarter in our nation's capital, Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore, here on the Big East Digital Network. DePaul with an 11 point lead, and so far for the Blue Demons, it's been fast break points, 10 2 in their favor, and they're plus six on the boards as well. They've been running up and down the court so far, knocking down their threes as well. And I think the other thing for DePaul, they had six different players score in that first quarter. Shante Stonewall, she only had two points, but everybody else stepping up, and again, that's where DePaul hurts you. They don't just rely on one player. They really are an entire team. So many ways DePaul can beat you. That's why they're a game away from winning the outright conference championship in the regular season. A drive inside, I think that was Barnes, and she is fouled. Two free throws upcoming. And this is something that Georgetown did really well against Villanova as well. Putting the ball on the floor, driving, drawing the contact, getting themselves in the lane. It was a nice aggressive play by Taylor Barnes. Makes the first free throw. 12.4 points per game this season, and then she's an 81% free throw shooter. And it shows, knocks them both down cleanly. As she tickles the twine, it is a nine point game. And again, I think Taylor Barnes should do more of that in this contest. 
draw the contact, try to earn trips to the free throw line because she is a very strong free throw shooter. Stonewall broke three, broke free and laid it in off the glass on a great feed inside. Just moving so well without the basketball, showing that entire skill set for Stonewall. Four early points for Shante Stonewall. Jones off balance, missed it. Fight for the rebound, it's gonna be a jump ball. It's a nice heads up play by Kovacikova. Another look at the great feet inside and the finish by Stonewall. We've talked so much about the unselfish play of DePaul, always looking for that cutting teammate, getting that higher percentage shot. They do it so well. Maya Stovall controls. Sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. It's now in the hands of Lexi Held. It's around a screen, pull up jumper, no good. And Gordon has the rebound for the Hoyas. That's Dealing a big with rebound Stonewall. For Georgetown, as you talked about, DePaul doing a nice job on the glass in that first quarter. Georgetown needs to do a little better. Great defense by Stonewall at one end, and Kovacikova recovers well. It'll stay with DePaul. I talked about it earlier. She's such a smart basketball player right there, anticipating the pass, getting her hand in the passing lane, just enough to deflect and disrupt what DePaul was trying to do. Morris, two quick passes and a three-point jumper. Man, that was lightning fast around the perimeter, and it's a 14-point game in the blink of an eye. That was a beautiful shot right there for DePaul, and as you said, they didn't waste a lot of time, and look at this steal. Knocked away by Stonewall. Near side corner, another three, Deja Church. Great ball movement by DePaul, and they're clicking on all cylinders. And with 8.22 to go, all of a sudden, it's a 17-point lead for the Blue Demons. They're stealing, they're shooting. They're making in the nation's capital. DePaul off and running in DC. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. The Big East Way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. Back here in Washington, D.C., DePaul leads Georgetown 30-13 to on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SoFi. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament, presented by Jeep, returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 conference tournament are now on sale, starting for just $50. For tickets, visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets. Of course, the Hoyas trying to salute, solidify a solid seed for themselves. The Blue Demons hoping with a win tonight, they'll clinch the number one seed in the Big East Women's Tournament on home territory as well. Well, and of course, Georgetown, they have that date coming up with Providence, who they're right there with in the rankings. So for Georgetown, as we talked about, it would be huge to get a win here tonight. They've got Marquette up next, so things just aren't going to get easier for Georgetown. 
Blue Demons are on an 8-0 run, Monica, and it's been the transition points, but Coach Bruno mentioned how big pressure was going to be for them in this game, and they've done it early and often, and it's led to a lot of great possessions on the offensive end. They've gotten some great shots. Well, you see how effective they are at this press. The double teams come so quickly. They get their arms up. They speed you up. Even if they don't get the steal, they force you into quick shots on the offensive end. Case in point, although this is going to be a blocking foul, as Tiana Jones drove inside. It looks like she'll head to the free throw line as it was Held who just didn't get there in time. That's exactly right. She was still moving, and that was a good call by the official. But Kelge is back in for the Blue Demons. Gordon to inbound for the Hoyas. Kovacikova lost it, and that's going to be off of her. It's going to be a turnover, and the Blue Demons get it back as they pressured her in that far side corner. And that's seven turnovers now for Georgetown already in this contest. Deepa Kelja out to Church. So many options for DePaul, but that time it's thrown away by Church. Gordon stepped into the passing lane. That was a really smart play by Cassandra Gordon. She anticipated that pass. She read it the entire way. She's seen it several times tonight already. Tayana Jones caught in no man's land and travels. Back to back empty possessions for the Hoyas. You cannot afford to do that against DePaul. These turnovers are just killing Georgetown. And she was in a good position too. Could have passed or gone up with the shot, right? Campbell thought about going up with it. Morris does and hits. Boy, when you're good, you're going to get those bounces. Sonia Morris knocks it down. It's an 11-0 run for the Blue Demons, and they are up by 20. And that is the seventh made three-pointer already in this game. Another steal. Missing a wide open layup was Stonewall. Morris cleans up the mess. They are just so strong. They hurt you from behind the three-point line. They hurt you with this pressure. They are just relentless. You see why they have a 24-3 and record. It is very difficult to defeat the Blue Demons. This made it a 13-0 run. Somehow Stonewall missed another wide open layup, but Morris was right there to make sure she wouldn't miss this one. Just another great job by DePaul. Feeding off of their defense, getting some quick offense. Ball inbounded to Barnes, who's going to dribble into a little bit of trouble here, but does well to stop on a dime, and the Hoyas are able to get it across the timeline. Osagi RSC on the entry pass. It was taken away, and a foul is going to be called. And Shania Wright, who just checked into the game, picks up a foul. They tried to get it into her. Had a decent position, but just couldn't get to it, and she picks up the foul. Shania Wright is certainly an interesting matchup on Shante Stonewall. I think the Hoyas hoping that Wright can get some rebounds and maybe get some offense. Stonewall, pure from deep. She's starting to heat up a little bit, although she's been missing a couple of open shots. That time she knocks down the three after missing an easy layup earlier, and it's 38 to 13, DePaul on top. And now eight made three pointers in this contest. DePaul is just so effective. That was effective. The Hoyas break the press perfectly that time. Tyana Jones knocks it in. On the other end, Morris off right on the three. Campbell got the offensive rebound. Church traveled as she drove inside, and DePaul gives it back. And that was a really quick shot for Morris. She was pretty far out on this three-pointer, but that's Stonewall on hers, and she absolutely buried it. Got a career-high 29 points a few games ago in South Orange against Seton Hall. And she is capable of having monster games on the offensive end for DePaul. Jones almost traveled, I think, as she handed it off to Barnes. Osagi Eresi off the glass, no good. Jones has the offensive board. Osagi Eresi, strong drive. Missed it, though, off the front of the rim. And here comes Kelly Campbell up the floor for DePaul. I like what Osagi Aresi is doing, driving along the baseline, dribbling inside. She just hasn't been able to knock down those shots. Great ball moving by DePaul. Stonewall turnaround baseline jumper, no good. Fight for the rebound. Osagi Aresi had a hand on it. So did Kelly Campbell, and it'll go to Georgetown with five and a half to go in the half. 
of Sagiresi. She really battles all over the floor. One of the smallest players on the court, but she's always in the mix trying to win the rebound. Dahlman back in for Campbell for DePaul. Georgetown, like you mentioned, Monica, five turnovers in the last 413 of game action. And well, the Blue Demons have made them pay. They're on a 16 to two run with five and a half to go in the first half. Osagiaresi you know, doing a nice job handling the pressure there, not allowing herself to get into a position to be trapped in the backcourt. Brianna Jones back in finding Tayana Jones. She hits a three. It's Jones to Jones, and it's a three-pointer for the Hoyas. She was the spark off the bench in the contest against Villanova. She knocked down a couple of quick shots, then started not being able to convert. But for Georgetown, she's another one of those X-factor players. When she's having a strong night, it's a really good sign for the Hoyas. That was great ball movement until that last pass by Stonewall, just a little out in front of Kiara Dolman. And here it's just trying to keep up with the Joneses on this great three by <laughs> Tiana. Well, that's exactly right. That was a beautiful shot by Tayana Jones. Of course, Brianna Jones had two made three-pointers in our first quarter. So Georgetown doing a nice job with their outside shooting tonight. They just haven't been able to get some of these inside looks to fall off the dribble penetration. Osagi Eresi dealing with the pressure. Gets it over to Barnes. Some numbers here for Georgetown if they hurry. And it's a lay-in off the glass. Great pass, and Kaleva lays it in off the glass. And that is textbook how you beat the full court press. It was a great find and a great finish by Kaleva. Here's Kelly Campbell, senior from New Jersey. Over to Deja Church, found the space and the layup is good off the glass. Deja Church really having a nice game for DePaul, almost in double digits. Yeah, nine points, three rebounds, and three steals in 13 minutes for number three in blue. Tiana Jones, in and out on a jumper, that was a two. And Campbell way up ahead and way out of the reach of Stovall. 20 point lead for DePaul. Well, and again, one thing that James Howard talked with us about before this contest is he wanted his team to have long possessions. He wanted to stretch this game out, not give DePaul as many possessions. But because of this pressure, that is easier said than done. They create so many possessions off this pressure. And again, that's the reason you see these big point totals for the Blue Demons. Couldn't quite find Kaleva, the pass from Barnes, and they'll go out of bounds and stay with Georgetown. You mentioned it earlier, Monica, it's been picking up the pace for the Georgetown offense and kind of forced them to take some tough, quick shots. And that's what DePaul lives on, is that speed and their pace on the break. And they've been knocking down their threes and they've been getting great looks. You know, it's really hard for a scout team in practice to simulate what DePaul does out on the floor. It is so impressive just how fast they are, how well they work together as a team. And I think Georgetown just struggling a little bit, and that's why they're forcing these quick shots, missing some of these inside looks that they've been getting. Here's Morris, step back jumper. Is good, a 15-footer. Boy, when those are going in, it's gonna be a long night. Absolutely. And again, just the balance of DePaul. How many different players can step up, can make that open shot? It stretches out a defense so much. Tough luck there by Barnes. Not on the same page with Tiana Jones, who was cutting baseline. And the Hoyas turn it over. That's their 12th turnover of the first half. Kovacikova comes back in for the Hoyas with just over three minutes to go in the first half. And the turnovers, I think, are the biggest storyline for the Hoyas in this game because it gets you out of rhythm on offense when you have so many turnovers and they just have not been able to get anything going consistently. Meanwhile, DePaul has been able to capitalize on a lot of those turnovers. Dolman to Stonewall. Easy as that, and the layup goes. It's a 44-20 lead for DePaul. Again, she is just so difficult to defend because she can hurt you all over the floor. Brianna Jones, 15-footer, off the mark. Stovall has the rebound. Seems like when Georgetown has been able to slow it down, they've gotten good looks, but those have been hard to come by at times 
Offensive rebound by Dahlman. She slipped. Campbell heads up play, keeps it alive. And again, she just does all the little things on the floor. That's unlucky right there for Stovall getting called for the travel. But I love how Kelly Campbell just always seems to be doing those little things, the hustle plays. That's what you want your senior leader to do. Morris with the step back jumper, just able to rattle that in. But we talked to Coach Doug Bruno yesterday, Monica, and he said, you know, there's a lot of players that are putting up big numbers in this conference offensively and scoring the ball a lot. You know, Kelly Campbell's not one of those players on a consistent basis as Jones misses the three, and there's a foul underneath going against, I believe, Georgetown. But with everything that Kelly Campbell does, Doug Bruno considers her, if not the, one of the best players in the conference. Well, and a bit of an unsung hero in some respects because she doesn't get all the recognition that she deserves because she's really the glue that holds this team together. Without her, DePaul is not nearly as good of a basketball team, and she's the one player, I think, if you take her off the floor, they're a very different basketball team. Stonewall was short on that three-point try. That was Morris saving it this time to Stovall, who finds the space and lays it in, plus the foul. That was a great drive right there by Stovall. And again, drawing the contact, converting on the bucket as we get another look here. Osagiaresi coming over, trying to draw the charge, but instead we're going to head to the free throw line. Stovall, an opportunity for the three-point play. Just to wrap up the Kelly Campbell talking point, Coach Bruno was saying, you know, if I wanted her to score 15 points per game, I'd tell her and she'd do it. If I wanted her to average you know, 15 assists per game, I'd tell her and she'd, and she'd do it, but it's not what's good for the team. And the way, the, way, the way they play, so many players, so many cogs make things happen. And boy, that Kelly Campbell puzzle piece takes up a lot of that blueprint. She picks off another pass here, finds Stonewall. But well, when you think about her stat line, she scored 1,000 points as we get another big shot. She has a chance to have 1,000 rebounds. She could graduate as the all-time assist leader. When you think about all the different things that she does on the floor, again, and all the intangibles, she is just a phenomenal player. Kaleva hits on a great pass by Brianna Jones in transition off the Sonia Morris trifecta, and it's 50-22. to 22. And that's another good basket from Kaleva when she's knocking down those shots. Georgetown's a different team. Great penetration by Stovall to the 10, and it's a 30-point game. And again, Boy. you see how quickly they set up this pressure. It is just automatic. Pass was behind Gordon. Campbell's right there to snatch it. But so is Kovacikova, and it'll stay with DePaul, 41.9 to play in the first half. And that's the second time she's done that in this second quarter. Her anticipation, her instincts, they're so good. She is always active. She's always giving you 110% out on the floor. Sonia Morris already has 15 points for the DePaul Blue Demons, right on cue. In and out on the shot this time. And Jones has the rebound for Georgetown. Up ahead, ripped away by Stovall. I mean, you think about the height differential between those two players. Stovall just reaches in there, grabs the ball away. That is such an impressive play by Stovall, just not backing down. Shot clock and game clock are just about on the same mark. Ten seconds to go in the half. Stovall backs it out with five to shoot. Crossover drive, foul on the way up with 3.3 on the clock. Actually, they're gonna take this out, out on the side, it looks like, actually. That was just before she went up with it. 3.3 seconds for the Blue Demons in this first half. Campbell to inbound, right to Morris with two. Puts it up at the buzzer. She's fouled with .8 on the clock. Just great clock awareness by DePaul on both of these possessions. You saw Stovall, she was constantly looking at the clock. And then once again, DePaul realizing they didn't have a lot of time. They needed to get a quick shot. They drew the contact. And now they get a couple of free throws before the end of the half. 16 points now for Sonia Morris. Boy, if I have to put this first half in one word for DePaul, relentless in this first half. They have not taken their foot off the gas. Morris has 17 in the first half, and it's gonna be a 54-22 lead for DePaul going into the halftime break. Yes. 
DePaul. Looking for the outright Big East title. They're running away with it at the moment. 54-22 lead at the break. More to come at the halftime report on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi from our nation's capital. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you. We love you. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. DePaul up big at the half here on the Big East Digital Network. And while the kids snack on some tasty popcorn during this halftime report, we take a look at some of the Big East honors from the past week. A lot of notable players from around the Big East over the past weeks of the season, really. But Jalen Agnew has really stood out this week for Creighton. And, of course, Matty Segrist, who's had a heck of a season for Villanova after redshirting last season for the Wildcats. Yeah, she has been Big East Freshman of the Week, I believe, 10 times, wow. which ties the record with uh, Maya Moore and, mm. and others. And so that is quite some company to be in. She's had a phenomenal start to the season and start to her Villanova career as well. As we take a look at the Big East honor roll as well as you we recognize some more of the best stars from around the conference. Obviously, Kristen Spoyers had a phenomenal career for the Butler Bulldogs, as is Mary Gadeka for the Villanova Wildcats. And of course, we had the pleasure of watching Shante Stonewall for a half here in DC. And Taylor Barnes as well gets an honor as well on the honor roll for the Georgetown Hoyas. I had a chance to talk with James Howard about Taylor Barnes getting that honor earlier in the week. And he told me that was huge for her. It was huge for the team for her to get that recognition. It's hard to come in for only one year into a program and try to leave your mark. And she's really done a nice job coming into this Georgetown program. That'd be a tough five to deal with, along with Shadeen Samuels from <laughs> Seton dream Hall team. as well, no question about that. At the half, it seems like DePaul's playing like the dream team right now. They have a 54 to 22 lead. More to come at the half here on the Big East Digital Network presented by SoFi. You're watching Georgetown Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. 
Back in D.C., DePaul with a big lead over the Georgetown Hoyas. This season is the final campaign for legendary Villanova head coach Harry Peretta, who is retiring after 42 years on the Wildcat bench. Part of Peretta's legacy has been the family ties of his program, no better exemplified than by Mary and Lisa Gadeka. Everyone always assumed that I was going to come to Villanova, and obviously Villanova has always been a home to me because I grew up here basically coming to games and knowing Harry. I was comfortable coming in and being recruited here at a pretty young age. At the end of the day, obviously, it was my decision, and I knew I wanted to come here. When we saw her from her junior to her senior year is when we knew for sure, but her sophomore to junior year, she started doing stuff, and we were like, whoa, this kid's a little better than we think she is. Not knocking my other kids, but I pretty much could tell by age four and five, okay, not real athletic. Mary was always tough, coordinated, and she was taller than everybody else. And then I think high school. I think once we got into high school and she had to learn how to work hard, I thought, you know, she could play at a level. I just never thought it would be here or at this level. For me personally, I actually ran Harry's offense in high school, so I had a little bit of an advantage coming in surprise. Most high school teams aren't going to run that kind of system. To get a player from a program that one of my former players coaches, whether it's Lisa or anybody else, is a big home run for us because that kid comes in already ahead of the other kids that are coming in with her. I think just understanding that Harry and the other coaches obviously foster such a relationship and um, an environment based on not only athletics but academics and understanding that we are student athletes. They always have our backs no matter what the situation is and they're always there for us both on and off the court. She's just a representation of what we're trying to teach here. We're trying to teach first of all be a student and then second of all be an athlete and then when you're an athlete try to play unselfish basketball uh, in a system where you're going to be asked to do many things so you have to evolve your game I think the benefit for playing in our offense is that we have so much freedom. I mean, obviously we do have a set where they'll tell us to run a specific number, but you know, if that if that look isn't open, we can do something else. Lisa was the mo most intense player maybe in the history of this program. Um, so in some ways I'm happy she doesn't have all of her mother's characteristics, but she has a lot of her mother's characteristics in terms of her tenacity, her playing hard, uh, her mobility and just her knowledge of the game that Lisa gave her coming into here. I think her toughness, her will to want to win, um, she's very unselfish, and I think her goal is, she doesn't care how many points she scores. She, if she scores 30 and win, great. If she scores two and we win, great. That never changes, and I always was like that as a player also. They're hard workers. Um, they're very loyal to the program. They're loyal to the school. They're natural recruiters for us. They are most, indicative of the people that we try to get here. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. DePaul in good shape here in our nation's capital at the break. 54-22 lead over the Georgetown Hoyas. Big East Fast Break is the weekly women's basketball show hosted by Megan Caffrey and Ashley Liotis breaking down everything in Big East women's hoops. You can catch all new episodes of Fast Break during the season every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. on the Big East Twitter and YouTube pages. On this week's show, Megan caught up with DePaul senior Shante Stonewall after the Blue Demons clinched a share of the regular season title. 
For the sixth time in the last seven years, the DePaul Blue Demons have won at least a share of the Big East basketball regular season title, as I'm now joined with senior forward Shantae Stonewall. Shantae, your team clinched at least a share of the regular season title in your final home game as a DePaul Blue mm-hmm. Demon. How special was that moment for you? It was super it was- special, and to be able to do that on our senior night just met the world of Kelly and I. You just mentioned Kelly Campbell right there. You and Kelly are the only two seniors on this year's squad. How would you describe your relationship with Kelly? Oh, it was great. It's definitely come a long way um, from being competitors our freshman year, trying to find our place here at DePaul, to being um, kind of like a dynamic duo on the court. Um, it's been great, and it's awesome to see how she developed and I developed, and just we're super excited for the rest of our season. We definitely want to lead by example for our um, younger ladies, um, We're definitely verbal when it comes to making sure they understand um, what DePaul ball is all about. And I feel like uh, we've done a good job by teaching them. In your three of your four years at DePaul, your team has won at least a share of the regular season title. How is this team, how is this program, excuse me, able to perform at such a high level so consistently? I feel like our coaches do a great job making sure that um, we compete in practice. Um, Also, we are very educated about our tradition here at our program um, and that we are walking in a legacy or setting legacies for um, players after us. So I feel like we do a good job of reminding each other um, of what DePaul Ball is all about. Um, Setting goals every year is another big um, key of ours and just making sure that we're focused every game and um, making sure that we execute every game. Shantae, you mentioned it a few times now, so I have to ask you, DePaul Ball. Big East women's basketball fans know what DePaul Ball is, but what's mm-hmm. your favorite part about DePaul Ball? Um, when I was being recruited, I always said the pace. Um, not really truly understanding what that meant. Um, it's a lot of up and down. Um, very entertaining um, for outsiders to watch. Uh, it's definitely like an up and down kind of basketball style. Uh, freelance offense, you know, you have the green light, greenest light in America. Um, very fun to watch and very fun to play as well. As a freshman, you averaged 5.4 points per game. Now as a senior, you lead your team in scoring, averaging 17.4 points per game. Where has been your biggest area of growth in your game? Um, I would say um, just being able to read the defense, um, using my versatility to the the maximum, um, finding myself in the right places and uh, continuing to run the floor. As you see when I play, I'm a very up and down player. So being able to uh, get in shape, stay in shape, my fitness takes me a long way, um, and like I said, I go back to my versatility, using all aspects of my game, whether that's a jump shot, um, playing with my back to the basket, being able to put the ball on the floor. Um, Bruno has helped me develop my game a lot, and so I'm just here to show it off my senior year. You are an Illinois native yourself. You're from normal Illinois. What has the experience been like being able to play college basketball in your hometown city? It's wild. Um, like you mentioned, normal is not even two hours away from Chicago. Um, so I definitely have a strong support system. Um, growing up, they always said, like, you know, you're going to do big things on the next level, um, speaking regarding college. Um, so it was great to see how all my past supporters still support me to this day. Um, I definitely go back to my high school every opportunity I get just to give back, to talk to old professors, talk to my high school coach, because they definitely had an impact on me growing up. You deep dish pizza type of girl? No, <laughs> not a huge fan of deep dish. Oh, wow. Okay, so you got to give you you have to let all of us know if we're not going to get Chicago deep dish then, what is a Chicago must eat? Ooh. <laughs> we have pre-game bonus. That's really good. Um post game, you know what, Illuminati's, they have really good wings, so I will go with that for sure. All right, what what type of wings are we doing? We doing boneless barbecue, barbecue or are you doing a little buffalo? Boneless barbecue wings, for sure. <laughs> barbecue, my type of girl, I love it. Shantae, thank you so much of thank you so much for joining me. Best of luck the rest of the season. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Back here in our nation's capital, Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore here with you, breaking this one down at the half. Georgetown trailing DePaul 54 to 22 here on the Big East 
digital network. DePaul outrunning a lot in this first half, and it kind of took a little while after making some missed shots early on. They were able to knock down their shots, get into their game. They've been knocking down their threes, and they've been out rebounding Georgetown as well. Absolutely. Look at that shooting percentage, 21 of 49 made three-pointers in this contest. Look at those rebounding numbers. That was a key for the Hoyas in this game, and DePaul has almost doubled them up on the rebounds. You mentioned it earlier, 15 turnovers for the Hoyas certainly haven't helped, but Doug Bruno talked about it was going to be pressure, pressure, pressure all night long, and it's paid off dividends in the first half. I think we expected it in this contest. We knew the pressure was going to be a factor. They have a lot of points in this contest off fast breaks, and some of that is off the pressure. And Sonia Morris leads the way, 17 points so far. Shante Stonewall, so far in this game, just nine points on 10 shots. But she seems to always make an impact when she's in the game just based on her size, her athleticism, and her presence inside. There you see her moving without the basketball, her teammates finding her. She can hurt you all over the floor. Look at the post moves that we're seeing out of her. We saw her knock down a three-pointer. Here it is right there. She really can do so many good things, has so much range, so many different skills in her arsenal. She can hurt you a lot of different ways, and the Hoyas have struggled with her. Saw some of those stats on the bottom there. 3.68 GPA, double major as well at DePaul. So she's got a lot of work to do off the court as well. And she's just a model student and a model player in the Big East Conference. Just an extremely talented young woman. I will be excited to see what the future holds for her even after basketball. No question about that. Excited to see what the future holds for this second half as it gets underway quickly with Deja Church getting a hand on the inbounds pass. Just in front of us, your court side at Absolutely. McDonough Arena. We had a front row view for that play. <laughs> that was excellent defense by Deja Church. Had to be on our toes that time, <laughs> just in case. And Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore, a great crew here in Washington, D.C. And it opens up with a DePaul, or rather a Georgetown bucket out of the start of the second half. That's a good sign for Georgetown coming out of the locker room because we talked about how they've struggled in the first quarter. They've struggled in the third as well. Stonewall answers. That's the DePaul bucket. It gets so used to saying the Blue Demon scoring in this game. It gets a little wild between Georgetown buckets every once in a while, but Hoyos off to a good start so far at least. Three-pointer, too strong that time. Osagi Eresi missing on that jumper. And, and here comes Lexi the Held. Pace once again in this contest. DePaul just speeding things up. That ball missed short by Kelly Campbell. Campbell so far six points, eight rebounds, and seven assists. She is on triple-double watch in this second half. And it's what you come to expect from Kelly Campbell doing everything her team asks of her. Morris is called for the foul on the Barnes jumper, although I think it's on the floor here. Second foul against Morris. Morris's career high is 30 points. Came against Villanova earlier this season. She's already halfway there to a possible tying of the career high. That's great defense right there by Kelly Campbell, making it very difficult for Georgetown to get the ball in bounds to Osagi Aresi. Osagi Aresi, short on the baseline jumper. Church grabs the rebound. And again, if you just watch Kelly Campbell play, I know we've talked a lot about her, but it is just a clinic in terms of everything you should do on the floor. Stonewall, yes, and a foul on a long two-point jump shot. She will head to the free throw line for a chance at a three-point play. She's now in double figures. And showing a little emotion after this play as well. She is all fired up. It doesn't matter what the scoreboard says. She is looking to make an impact every single time down the floor for the Blue Demons. Stonewall 0 for 1 at the line tonight. Makes that one. So she's 1 of 2. She's a 78% free throw shooter coming in. And again, she's the point person on this full court pressure, guarding the basketball, coming over to help with the double team. And Kovacikova almost traveled there, but she got rid of it. Osagi Aresi, great hesitation move and the drive to the basket, little stop and go to the 10. And that's what she was looking for in the first half. She couldn't knock down those shots. That's a big bucket and a nice aggressive move by Osagi Aresi. Held too strong on the three. Morris, the weak side rebound. Campbell the kick. Church off to the left on that jumper, held the offensive rebound. Out to Campbell, great extra pass to Stonewall. That one's no good 
fight for the rebound. It's on the floor. A foul is called. So we take a look at the last possession where Georgetown got a nice bucket. Osagi Eresi on the drive. Just a great move off the dribble by Osagi Eresi. And what about all these offensive rebounds on DePaul's end of the floor again? I'm impressed with the way they're rebounding the basketball against Georgetown, particularly on the offensive end. And it leads to plays like this. Morris is fouled, and she's going to go to the line to shoot two free throws off that extra effort play by Lexi Held to get the offensive rebound. Georgetown, meanwhile, they only have one offensive rebound in this contest. Again, that was a big thing the Hoyas are looking to do today, and they have not done it very well on their offensive end of the floor. Morris makes the first. 86% free throw shooter. Well, you look at all those numbers up and down for free throws. Kelly Campbell has only missed three free throws all season for that DePaul. That is a phenomenal How crazy is that? statistic. Unbelievable, again, just every single facet of her game, as I said. It's just like watching a clinic on the floor. You can't poke too many holes in this DePaul team, can you? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to do. They are just as impressive in person as they are on paper, I will tell you that. Uh, Look at that defense. She's going to get called for the foul. But just so aggressive, so intentional. Every single play going for the turnover, they do not let up ever. Looks like Stonewall was actually deemed to be out of bounds going for that, so she avoids the foul. And it'll just be side out in front of the Georgetown bench for Kovacikova. Into Barnes. Hoyas have nine to shoot on the shot clock. Barnes pulls up for a three, and it's good. And that's a big time bucket right there for Georgetown. A lot of confidence out of Barnes on that shot. The shot clock was winding down. That's a good possession for Georgetown. Eight points for Barnes. Morris off the mark that time on a long two. Osaki Eresi able to keep possession at least for the Hoyas as Barnes went one-on-one -on -one with Morris and knocked it down. And Georgetown could certainly use more of that from Taylor Barnes. And again, she always draws a tough defensive assignment. Always at the top of the scouting report, teams looking to focus in on her. DePaul gets it right back. Here's Morris. Church thought about it, almost passed it to Campbell without looking, but Kovacikova couldn't quite get control of it. There's a foul away from the ball here. Osagi Eresi, I think, was battling underneath. And that's a tough matchup for Osagi Eresi against Stonewall. Look at that. That is almost an impossible task. And right off the inbounds, Deja Church with a perfect cut to the basket. Unmarked, she lays it in. And it's 63 to 29. DePaul in front with just over, rather just under, seven minutes to play here in the third quarter. A whistle and a foul. That's Lexi Held, who was trying to get around a screen. Third personal foul on Lexi Held. And we've seen Stonewall play defense on a lot of different players. Now she's playing defense on Osagi Eresi. Osagi Eresi had it knocked away from her by Campbell. It'll stay with Georgetown. Well, it's no wonder that Doug Bruno beams every time he talks about Kelly Campbell. She just seems to epitomize the way DePaul plays on both ends of the floor as Jones knocks down the jumper. Brianna Jones, that is. And Georgetown is up to 31 points. Brianna Jones, a solid night as well. She's got eight for the Hoyas. Deep three-pointer, Morris knocks it down. She's up to 20 for the Blue Demons. 10 off her career high. What a day Morris is having in this contest. She has been absolutely phenomenal for DePaul. Last year, she only averaged four points per game. She has really stepped it up for her sophomore campaign. And Doug Bruno told us that really the biggest thing was she focused on her fitness during the off season. And that has really made the difference for her. And she is a big impact player now for DePaul. Right off the inbounds, Barnes too strong on the baseline jumper. Didn't get anything. Morris up ahead. Church made the run down the floor. Couldn't quite make the bucket. 
Campbell's there for the offensive rebound. Hell short on the three. Fight for the rebound. Church has it. Into a cutting stone wall. No, but she's fouled. And again, two offensive rebounds on that possession for the Blue Demons. And if you're Georgetown, that's too, too many, too many chances for a team that is so good on the offensive end. And now they're going to send Stonewall to the free throw line. Looks like Cassandra Gordon and Tiana Jones will come back in. Sagi Eresi and Kovacikova will head to the bench. Boy, Georgetown, again, we're in it after the first quarter, but DePaul has been relentless ever since as Stonewall makes the first free throw. And boy, by the way they're playing, you'd think it was 38-31, not 67-31. Not well, again, they don't look at the scoreboard. They play DePaul ball for the entirety of the basketball game, the full 40 minutes. It doesn't matter what's happening, and you love that effort out of the Blue Demons. It is deep in the DePaul DNA, no question about that as they're closing in on their third straight regular season Big East Championship and this is gonna be a one on nothing. Shante Stonewall makes it in and she continues her strong night as well. She's creeping up there as well. Stonewall all of a sudden has 18 points for the Blue Demons. There was a little smile on Deja Church's face when she looked up and she saw Stonewall under the basket. And look at Campbell on the glass again for DePaul. Underneath, extra pass, Morris to Stonewall. And it's plays like that that make Doug Bruno smile, that unselfish play. Talk about DePaul ball, that's it at its best. 72 to 31, DePaul's on a nine nothing run. It's been Morris, it's been Stonewall. Heck, it's been the whole Blue Demon squad. They're on their way to a regular season Big East Championship. 5-10 to go in the third here in DC. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we... Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore back here in our nation's capital. DePaul in control over Georgetown. 72 to 31 is Coach Doug Bruno making sure his team stays focused as we take a look at their upcoming schedule for the rest of the regular season. A couple of tough games coming up. Villanova at the new pavilion on February 23rd and then March Madness kicks off when the Blue Demons go play Marquette. We're trying to catch them right now, but obviously Marquette's uh, running out of time here as far as the regular season championship is concerned. Well, that's certainly true, particularly the way that DePaul has played today. They have been absolutely phenomenal. Take a look here at this beautiful shot by Morris. What a game she has had. We are well on our way, as you talked about, to another career high for Sonia Morris. So smooth on that three-point jump shot. She's at 22 points right now. 30's the career high. Stonewall's now at 20. She's knocking on the door of her career high as well. And obviously the big storyline coming into this game, DePaul has already a share of the Big East regular season title. They're trying to win it outright for the third straight year. And that'll be the first time in program history since 1990 through 93 when they were in the North Star and then back-to-back -back Great West titles. A little throwback there to the early 90s. DePaul trying to make it a three-peat 
and they're well on their way. And the way that they've been doing it has been the way they've been doing it all year. You see Kiara Dolman checking back in. They've been putting up the pressure. They've been defending extremely well on the other end. Full court pressing has been leading to turnovers. And so far, points off turnovers, plus 21 in DePaul's favor, 26 to five. It's unbelievable. Over a third of their points in this contest are off turnovers. That really tells you about their style of play and how effective that pressure has been in tonight's contest. It's also really taken Georgetown out of their game offensively. There's a jump shot from Cassandra Gordon, one of the players that Coach Howard's been really happy with, with her development this season. She's developing into a pretty big shot maker for this team as well. She knocks down the jumper, traveling violation against Dolman, and Georgetown gets it back. So with 4.37 to go in the third, we'll head for another timeout. And a nice segment there for Georgetown, and it's 72 to 33, Blue Demons at the break here in Washington, D.C. You're watching DePaul Ball Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. My parents never taught me anything about managing money. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. We just decided we didn't want debt any longer. I didn't realize how easy investing could be. I'm picking companies that I believe in. I think SoFi Money is amazing. Thank you, SoFi. SoFi, thank you, we love you. is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Back in Washington, D.C., Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore here on the Big East Digital Network. Oh, don't look now. The Campbell <laughs> crew has invaded into here in D.C. in McDonough Arena. Oh, man, look at that. All the Campbell I mean, heads, the Shante Stonewall. I think that look. is any team in the Big East's worst nightmare. That's like a full team of Kelly Campbells over wow. there. Wow, how about that? That the Campbell would be scary how about that's that? what you were going to face. How good is this? Hey, 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 that is quite some fan support, some family in attendance tonight for Kelly Campbell, and she certainly has put on a show tonight. That time of year, right? You want some Campbell's Chunky to keep you warm <laughs> during the winter nights, and the Campbell crew certainly enjoying this one as DePaul is in control with 4.20 to go. Big basket there, though, for the Hoys. They try to get some momentum to finish this game off strong. And that's Cassandra Gordon again for the Hoyas. I like how she's come into this contest and been a big factor in the third quarter. Kalifa with a block on the baseline drive, but held wide open. Misses that time on the three. And Tiana Jones has the board for Georgetown. Here comes Barnes for the Hoyas. And maybe that block will get Kalifa going because she really hasn't been as effective in this contest after the opening minutes in that first quarter. Dangerous pass picked off by Held. But Kelch is up the floor. Held thought about it. The hesitation, the drive inside, and the basket goes off the roll. 
And we talked about relentless, and that really is the only word right now that comes to mind with DePaul. They just do not let up. But now Doug Bruno looking over at his bench. He's going to put in some substitutes. Barnes controls with 3.20 to go. Here in the third quarter. Barnes with a crossover driving inside and she is fouled. Nice aggressive drive there by the grad transfer. That was some nice recognition by Barnes because she recognized she was being defended by Dahlman. She felt like she could beat her off the dribble and that was a really smart decision by the graduate student. Stovall comes back in for DePaul. Jolene Daniger, the sophomore from Andover, Minnesota, number 15, checks in for her first minutes for the Blue Demons. Kalova driving in on Church, banks it in. Nice move inside. Took advantage of the size of bit this match and knocked it in. And again, sometimes her defense can feed into her offense. She had that big block, and that was a nice offensive play by Kalova. And mishandled by Daniger that time, and she turns it over. So back with the Hoyas. 74-37 with 2.47 to go here in the third quarter. Barnes will bring it up for the Hoyas. It's her one year in D.C., but she kind of brought in some scoring that was really needed from last year's Hoya team and has really picked up the slack since coming in from Memphis. And I think also in addition to the scoring, just the leadership and the experience for Georgetown because Georgetown didn't have a lot of seasoned players. They lost a lot to graduation when you think about Deanna White, Dorothy Adamako. So it was a really good get for Georgetown to get Taylor Barnes coming into this program. They had a big need and they were very happy when she decided to come to D.C. So Daninger was fouled and it's going to send her to the free throw line with 2.30 to play in the third. She knocks down the first. It's like a couple, maybe one more change on tap for the Blue Demons. Marissa Warren, the freshman, getting ready to come in. We were wondering when we were going to start seeing more of Doug Bruno's bench, and it looks like that time has arrived. So Deja Church, for the time being at least, will head to the bench. 11 points, five rebounds, and three assists. Not to forget the three steals as well. She's had a great all-around game also for the Blue Demons so far. 2.20 to go in the third. Georgetown getting some good movement. And a foul, Barnes going up with it. Kalova with a nice handoff, Barnes using her speed to get to the 10. And again, everybody clearing out, giving her an opportunity to drive in the lane. That was well executed by the Hoyas. And now Taylor Barnes, we talked about her free throw shooting. That can be a big asset to the team, but she has to knock these down. Both teams are now in the bonus. So Barnes gets to the line and makes the first. And the 81% free throw shooter knocks them both down. Here's Stovall for the Blue Demons. And Bekelge almost threw that away. The drive and the kick. Dahlman out to Stovall. Daninger, step back three, short. Jones has the rebound for the Hoyas. And Tayana Jones on the last few possessions has been a nice job rebounding the basketball for the Hoyas. Kalova out to Barnes, and the Hoyas will reset. This could be an interesting thing to see you know, late in the season for DePaul. These are going to be some players that they might need down the stretch. If we're talking Big East tournament, or maybe even the NCAA tournament, as well as Kalova was found going up with that, and she'll shoot two free throws. Well, and you also just think about how important, as we get a nice look there at the entry pass into Kalova, how important it is for, for your freshmen to get these minutes on the floor, because you think about some of these players, like Sonia Morris, who were freshmen last year. We talked about how she averaged four points per game, but you think about all that valuable on-court experience that she got, which really fed into her success, motivated her to want to get more minutes this year, want to wanted to be a more impact player, and she has certainly done that. And Coach Bruno was telling us too, with Kiara Dahlman specifically, she missed seven of the first 10 weeks of the season. Could be very important for DePaul down the stretch. Just coming on now and 
kind of gives them some interior presence against some of the bigger teams they might see, whether it's in the Big East tournament or in March in the NCAA tournament as well. She is really an important piece to the puzzle for DePaul because she does add something that the team didn't have without her. Gordon rushed it, Jones follows up. Tayana Jones is very quietly becoming a factor for the Hoyas in this third quarter. She's had some nice rebounds. That was a nice heads up play. She's played some nice defense. She's been very active out on the floor. And when you think about the future of the Hoyas, she's certainly a player that factors in very big. Dolman underneath lays it in. And that's going to be, again, we talked about her size and how against some of those bigger teams, especially in the NCAA tournament where you really have to adjust to the competition. You don't always know who you're going to play in the next game. And having that as an extra piece for size for DePaul is always nice to have. And of course, the talent she brings to the table as well as Barnes pulls the trigger and rattles in a three. She continues to just be very solid in this contest for Georgetown. She has been consistent throughout the game. Final five seconds of the third. Stovall drives. And there's going to be a foul on the floor with 2.2 left on the clock. And that's four on Brianna Jones. So that was perhaps not a foul she wanted to give up. Stovall at the line makes the first. Stovall's been part of the depth with the backcourt that the Blue Demons have had this season. And we've mentioned the culture that Paul has. And you see with a lot of other teams towards the top of the Big East this season, there's always somebody next in line. And when you have that kind of culture, it can really expand how good your program can be over a long period of time. And if anybody knows that, it's Doug Bruno. End of the third quarter in DC, the Hoyas are hanging in, but the Blue Demons are rolling towards the outright Big East Championship. You're watching Georgetown Women's Basketball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. DePaul on top as we head to the fourth quarter in D.C. Sean St. Jacques, Monica Moore here with you inside McDonough Arena as we take a look at the upcoming schedule for the Georgetown Hoyas trying to finish off the regular season strong. It's going to be tough. Three really tough road trips up ahead. Marquette is coming up next. Then a crucial game at Providence, like you mentioned earlier, Monica. And then they've got to go to the Sokol Arena to take on the Blue Jays. That's right. Providence just had that upset win over St. John's. That was a big game. That was huge for Providence. And so right now for Georgetown, that's a big date circled on the Hoyas calendar. Of course, the Jays, the only team to beat DePaul in the Big East regular season to this point as well. So three tough road games upcoming for the Hoyas to finish things off in the Big East regular season. DePaul, of course, on their way to the outright Big East championship. They're 10 minutes away from celebrating after winning a share of it last time out. And of course, it'll be in the books regardless of what Marquette is doing at the moment 
as DePaul is really their magic number is one. It's in their hands, and they've been playing like it so far, and they're starting the fourth quarter with an 80-45 to lead here in our nation's capital as Stovall will get it off the inbounds by Dolman. Get things started here in the fourth quarter. It's another nice look inside. You just continue to see this ball movement for DePaul. They are so unselfish, always looking for the extra pass. They are great teammates to each other, and it is just phenomenal how well they distribute the basketball. Stovall almost made an impressive left-handed layup around a couple of Hoya players, but it's with Jones on the other end for Georgetown. Osagi Eresi, it was the right idea, but she bounced it a little too far in front, and it's a turnover. I do like how aggressive she was being off the dribble, trying to create a good opportunity for Kalova. So a little unlucky there for the Hoyas. 9.20 to go here in the fourth quarter. That was Bakelja trying to find it inside, and... Like and Tiana was Jones, fouled. she knew that was not the foul she <laughs> wanted to give. You could see it on her face after she committed it. But I like the recognition, but she also realizes that's her fourth personal, so she's going to have to be very smart. Still ball will reset. Daninger now with it. Dolman on the interior. Oh, she tra travels with it. Would have knocked it down if she had kept both feet, or at least one foot on the ground, and she gives it away. So with 9.03 to go, it goes back to Georgetown. There's Doug Bruno again. No one, he's getting pretty close here. <laughs> well, he wants his team to finish the last nine minutes strong, and that's what's been the cornerstone of this remarkable 34-year run in Chicago. Well, talking to him before the basketball game, he told us that perhaps the regular season title is the most important thing to his team because a Big East Conference tournament win, that's only a couple of games. You look at the NCAA tournament, that's only a couple of games. But the regular season, that's a marathon. That's really your team winning, surviving the test of time against great opponents. And so for his team to win the regular season outright, that was really at the top of the bucket list here for DePaul because that really means something about the consistency that you put in day in and day out as a team. And on, on top of that, for the team to set those goals at the beginning of the season, not Coach Bruno, not his staff, the players themselves saying, no, 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 we want to win it outright. We want it to be ours. Pretty impressive and tells you a lot about the kids that are part of this program. Meanwhile, Cassandra Gordon is heating up in the second half for the Hoyas. This is a great sign for Georgetown down the stretch of the Big East season. They have needed a player like Cassandra Gordon to start stepping it up, making some of these big baskets, particularly in late game situations. And Osagi Eresi again with the aggressive drive. And she is fouled going up. Let's take a look at the last sequence here. That's another great shot by Gordon. She has had a very solid game for Georgetown and again, confidence has been what Georgetown has been trying to get for her. They think that that is so important in these game situations and perhaps this contest is going to give her more of that confidence she's been looking for. Seen a little more of the DePaul bench as Kayla Caudle checks in and Nadej Jean also checks in as well for some help on the interior for the Blue Demons and that was Jean who picked up the foul there as Kalova tried to find her way inside. And we'll get another look here. Great job putting the ball on the floor. You see the contact right there by Jean. So two shots for Kalova. She tried to get to the basket on that last sequence. She's a good free throw shooter, over 90% on the year for the Hoyas. Knocked that one down. Coach told us before the game, progression's been solid for a lot of this season. The shooting and her rebounding has been really impressive. And it's been the last eight games that have really stood out with her in the middle of this Big East Conference slate. Did miss the second free throw that time. And it's just with her, it's been about confidence. Kind of like this Georgetown team in general, the way they've been trying to finish the season strong and get that consistency on both ends of the floor. Because again, we saw some of it in the first quarter and in that second quarter, DePaul's pressure kind of took them out of their game, like you mentioned earlier, Monica. And it's kind of about, you know, building that own their own culture here in Georgetown with, you know, fighting on both ends, but also with that already being in place, getting that consistent confidence shooting the basketball. 
Well, I think that's right. And, if you know, I talked with James Howard quite a bit over the past few weeks, and it's something that he constantly comes back to with his team is that theme. Gordon has some confidence going right now, right on cue. She knocks it down, and she's in double figures out of nowhere with 10 points. This is a huge game right here for Gordon. Perhaps this is going to be the start of something big for her in terms of her progression with this Georgetown basketball team. And Kalova's starting to step it up defensively. She's looking for the blocks and to make the big defensive plays. Two Hoya players are now in double figures, and I believe that's the fourth block for Kalova in this game so far. So you're starting to see some of the Georgetown bright spots here in the fourth. You can always count on Kalova for that defensive effort, no matter how well her offense is going on the floor, no matter what else is happening. She always gives you 110% defensively. Hannah Purcell, who just checked in, goes up with it. It's short. Tiana Jones leads the break for the Hoyas. Crosses over, steps into a two-point elbow jumper. It's no good. And Daninger has the rebound. Great pass by Stovall, but it was tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Blue Demons, 640 to go in the fourth. Georgetown doing such a nice job though, getting back down the floor, not letting DePaul convert on the fast break. Brianna Mayfield will come in, the junior from Landover, Maryland. Her first minutes. Dan Kiki Rimmer, the freshman from Maywood, Illinois, a local product for DePaul, comes in for her first minutes. Both coaches really looking to their benches right now. Pass was almost picked off by Osagi Eresi, and Daniger will control for the Blue Demons. Rimmer inside, Purcell thought about it, and travels. I think she just got caught in between that time, wasn't sure if she wanted to pass, or maybe try to go for a shot. I think that's exactly right. You could almost see the indecision, which led to the travel. Now we've seen that a couple of times on DePaul's end of the floor. Blue Demons, of course, were Ranked in the top 16 when the first seeding came out for the NCAA tournament. And all the times they've made deep runs, sweet 16 runs under Doug Bruno, and had some memorable memories in March, no question about that. Looking to make more as the season winds down. Purcell comes up with no contact on the rim that time. It goes out of play. Well, I think that's exactly right. They certainly look poised to make a deep run in the tournament. They have all the pieces that they need. They're a very balanced team, and we saw that tonight. You never know which player it's going to be. Tonight, it's Sonia Morris. And on top of that, what could be a big thing for DePaul as well, as the shot goes for Kovacikova, who knocks it down a 15-footer. Good to see that for Georgetown. but. The seeding could be really good for DePaul. At times it's been a seven or a double digit seed, a little bit of a lower seed, but to see them in the top four line could give them a nice run to maybe make an even deeper run than even DePaul's known for making. Well, that's exactly right. They have put themselves in a very good position with the body of work that they have on the year so far. And again, what you really love to see out of teams is today, they knew they needed to take care of business. They wanted to go ahead and win the regular season outright, and they came out today and played exactly like that team that wanted that big win today here at home for Georgetown. Mayfield with an offensive foul away from the basketball. Another look at it here. And, and you see it there, the there you go. moving screen. <laughs> Easy work there for the officials. The Stovall crosses half court. And again, we, like we mentioned, this is just step one for the Blue Demons. Of course, the Big East Tournament is on home soil this year for the Blue Demons. They're hoping to take advantage of that in Chicago, March 6th through the 9th. This is a foul on Rimmer was going up with it. And with 4.58 to go, we'll take a timeout here in Washington, D.C. DePaul closing in on the outright Big East championship. Doug Bruno squad up 80 to 56 in our nation's capital. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was gonna spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. 
We have no debt. We don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing, we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University. Here, here we, we do. do. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. 12th ranked DePaul in front of the Georgetown Hoyas, 80 to 56 with 4.58 to go in the fourth quarter in our nation's capital on the Big East Digital Network. The Big East Women's Basketball Tournament presented by Jeep returns to Wintrust Arena in downtown Chicago, March 6th through the 9th. All session tickets for the 2020 Conference Tournament are now on sale starting at just $50 for tickets. Visit www.bigeast.com slash WBB tickets for more information. Should be a lot of fun. Obviously, DePaul about to seal up the number one seed in the Big East tournament, but Monica, a lot of other seeding arrangements to be determined down That's the stretch. Right. It is gonna be a fantastic end of the season because these teams are just neck and neck. We talked about it before the game, Sean, just that pack in the middle separated by just one game. I mean, when you've got a team that's good as St. John's trying to fend off the first round, I mean, this tells you how deep it is from two to seven right now in the Big East Conference. And it has been such an exciting year, and it's been really great to see how even a lot of these teams are any given day. Any team can beat any other one. Rimmer made a free throw. That's the first point, believe it or not, of the quarter for DePaul. Of course, they've gone to the bench. Is Nice move inside by Mayfield, who was fouled. That's right, that was a strong, aggressive move by Brianna Mayfield. She has to use her size to her advantage, and that's exactly what she just did on that post play. Six foot five center from Landover, Maryland, a junior. This is the first free throw. Lexi Kimball just into the contest for Georgetown. She hasn't gotten a ton of minutes throughout the season for the Hoyas, but a good opportunity here for Kimball to get some time out on the floor. 0 of 2 on the free throws. DePaul comes out with it. Kiki Rimmer with the rebound. And she came up limping a little bit there, kind of just tossed it away. Play will be stopped. Hopefully she's all right. Not exactly sure what happened there, but as soon as she kind of crossed half court and put the ball on the floor, she came up a little bit gimpy that time. Hopefully she's all right. So for the moment, Warren's gonna come in for her. Yeah, I certainly hope this is nothing serious right here. She's gonna get a little medical attention over on the sidelines, but you hate to see this, particularly this late in the game. Back underway, Danager restarts it. Purcell thought about it. And a traveling violation. That We've was seen at least huddled. three of those yeah. in this fourth quarter for DePaul. They're really struggling, moving those feet just a little bit. In good position to Caudle that time to make a play, but like you said, just couldn't keep that pivot foot down, and it is a turnover. 4.15 to play in the fourth.
Kovacikova for three. It's good. Fourth quarter has been a solid quarter for the Hoyas. Obviously going over and against the second strings for DePaul. But we've seen the confidence grow as the fourth quarter has gone along. When you just love the effort out of this Hoyas team, just continuing to try to do good things, play after play for the Hoyas. Daninger misses the three, knocked away, and Tiana Jones has it. Two on one for the Hoyas. And the layup is good inside. Kimball knocks it down. And the crowd is going to, you're going to hear the Hoya faithful give her a big round of applause because, again, she doesn't get a lot of minutes out on the floor. And I love to see her making the most of her opportunities. That was a great find. And I love how Tayana Jones is bringing the ball up the floor in transition right now because she's got a lot of speed and quickness. And that has been very effective for the Hoyas. How about Kimball scoring on one end, defending well at the other end, forces the miss. That's a long three-point try by Mayfield. That's not her game, and it showed. It'll go back to the Blue Demons with 3.09 to play. A little sloppy there for the Hoyas on that play, but Mayfield knew it. It was good recognition after the shot. Here's Purcell. Stovall over to Daninger. We talked about it earlier. I mean, this is a really good opportunity for some of these younger players for DePaul. And that was a nice, strong drive to the bucket. Stovall has nine points now for DePaul. Three of five and three of three from the free throw line. She also has three rebounds and a steal as well. It just seems like the stat lines for every DePaul <laughs> player that gets big minutes are pretty darn long. Kovacikova, great drive inside, and she sticks it in off the glass. And then pokes it away at the other end. That's what you love to see. A player's not applauding themselves on the offensive end of the floor for a good play. They're getting back defensively, making the big defensive play. We've seen her do that at least three times now on the defensive end of the floor for the Hoyas. Especially against a DePaul team where you can never rest on your laurels. Foul on the inbounds. And they'll take it right back out again. I think that was on Mayfield away from the ball. <laughs> Looks like Wright will come in for Mayfield. 2.19 to go in the fourth. DePaul with a 20 point lead. Missed layup by Purcell. Daninger thought about a 15 footer. And Stovall will reset. Great find underneath. Lay in for Stovall, who's in double figures with 11, and it's back up to 22. And that was just more great passing by DePaul. No matter who's out on the floor, you can count on them to play that consistent style of basketball, the unselfish play, finding the open player, looking for the extra pass. Offensive rebound by Jones. Kim Ball's open, in and out. Fight for the rebound. Right, yes, and a foul. So she was out of the lineup for a few games for the Hoyas. She returned for very limited minutes against Villanova. But this is what she provides, is that presence on the offensive glass. She can get those offensive rebounds, the quick put back. That is a big part of her game. This is the free throw, though. Hoyas today, 6 of 11 from the charity stripe. And there's 1.30 to play here in the fourth. And Stovall is clearly the leader on the floor right now for DePaul. She is running everything for the Blue Demons. Great pass to Daninger who cut to the basket, couldn't quite finish. Offensive rebound and the stick back. Cottle cutting to the basket. That was a bullet of a pass by Stovall. Another great find and another nice offensive rebound for the Blue Demons that leads to two points. Under a minute to play. Inside the McDonough Arena, and DePaul is closing in on the outright Big East Championship, and a number one seed in the Big East Tournament as Kovacikova drives. Did make the shot, but it's not going to count. There was a foul on the floor in the lead up, and that is going to descend Kovacikova to the line as DePaul is over the limit. She has had a very strong fourth quarter for Georgetown. I love the way that she stepped up for the Hoyas. One thing, just to kind of wrap things up on Georgetown for this game, 
you know, Coach Howard told us it's the Big East tournament. You know, they're hoping to be a really tough out when they get to Chicago. And again, they're going to have three tough games coming up after this. But we're seeing the signs that Georgetown can be a troubling team to play at times. And they could be in the Big East tournament. They certainly have the pieces and they have players that are getting better and better every single game. I love what we've seen out of Cassandra Gordon tonight. She has been a huge bright spot for the Hoyas. And I love what we've seen out of Tayana Jones. How about right? Another bucket inside for her. And it's an 87 to 69 game. DePaul led by as many as 41 points. Well, I'll tell you, the, the points per minute production here for Shania Wright is pretty impressive in this contest. Yeah, Wright has been knocking down a couple since she's come back into the game. Down to the final 10 seconds. Shot clock is off. DePaul is going to pass this one out. Final seconds are going to tick off the clock. And the DePaul Blue Demons, the class of the Big East all season, the dominators of the Big East all season, are the outright Big East regular season champions for 2019-2020. 87-69 is the final, and they will be the one seed in the Big East Women's Championship Tournament in Chicago. Doug Bruno's squad was strong again, and the 12th-ranked Blue Demons pick up another victory. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll catch up with the winning coach, Doug Bruno, here from D.C. on the Big East Digital Network, presented by SOFA. You're watching DePaul Ball on the Big East Digital Network. The amount of student loan debt I have, I'm embarrassed to even say. I felt like I was going to spend my whole adult life paying this off. Thanks to SoFi, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. As of 12 p.m. today, I am debt free. We have no debt, we don't owe anybody anything, and it's fantastic. Here, we do what others don't. Dream what others won't. Driven to leap forward, determined to always give back. Here, we work where giants have played, where the connection of work and ethic is made. A diverse community possessed with a passion to know and grow and go and show the world we are prepared to change it. Here, we ask what must be done, for in doing we learn and earn success. And you can get there from here. DePaul University, here, here we do. Back here in Washington, D.C., Sean St. Jacques here with you on the Big East Digital Network. DePaul wins it, Coach Doug Bruno here with me. Courtside, Coach, congratulations, your team wins the outright Big East regular season title. You mentioned to us yesterday that the players set out that goal. What does it mean that they achieved it here tonight? Well, I, I think they're just, they wanted to win this championship outright, so they were, knew they had to win one game to do it, so they were really focused and ready to play, and you know, they had a great energy to start the game, and we didn't score the ball for two and a half minutes. We were so excited, we couldn't make a layup, but Coach Howard and this Georgetown team has had some really, really great games in the last few games, and so, we know they went and beat Xavier at Xavier. They played Villanova close. They played an even game with St. John's. So this is a talented Georgetown team. Sonia Morris really picked up the slack early on for your team. What was the key to getting her going and getting her to knock down some shots? She was in some great spaces to make Ma something happen. Making shots is, a, is why it's called basketball. And, and you can't score if you don't shoot the ball. And you still have to have presence of mind when you're not making shots, I think. Sonia's learning that, but I think the all five starters were really juiced and ready to play. And I think the top eight were, you know, late in the game, some of the, you know, the younger players got some experience. It's part of your culture, but what's the key to keeping it strong down the stretch and finishing off the regular season strong and then being the number one seed going in to the Big East tournament in Chicago? No, there's no question about that. Shante Stonewall and Kelly Campbell are two special seniors. We're going to miss them. And, you know, that's what they they want to put themselves in the best position we can be in in the postseason, and that's their goal. Coach, congratulations on the victory. DePaul wins it here in D.C. They are the Big East regular season champions outright, and they are the number one seed going into the Big East women's basketball tournament in Chicago. They were dominant from start to finish tonight. They've been dominant from start to finish in the Big East regular season slate as well. DePaul wins it here in D.C. They win the Big East 
regular season title outright, 87-69 to the final over Georgetown. For Monica Moore and our entire crew here in D.C., I'm Sean St. Jacques saying so long from Washington, D.C. Once again, DePaul wins it, and they win the Big East regular season title outright here on the Big East Digital Network. Thank you, Brian.